Welcome to Daily Prayer on Thursday, the 20th of April. Today we will look at one of those passages of scripture that is really well known and famous and much loved by all of us, but nonetheless very special and worth talking about. So let's start with prayer. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to praise you and to thank you for your love. We thank you for the lovely bright weather and for the day that we have. In Jesus' name, Amen. It is a lovely bright day and I was going to do this recording outside in the garden. But when I got out there and started to set up, it's still very cold indeed. So we're staying indoors today and hope to be out in a week or two's time. The reading is John three sixteen through to 21. I've seen placards with this reference on John three sixteen at football matches, uh, demonstrations, political and other types. Um, I, I've just seen it on bridges over motorways. There's hardly a place I haven't seen it. And I've always wondered, why do people just put the reference John 3.16? If you're a Christian, yeah, you know what that is. But if you're not, perhaps you don't. But anyway, this is it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment, that light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all those who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. So there's quite a lot more to that reading than just the one verse although that verse does stand on its own. And if I'm honest, I prefer it in the, the older language Bibles, which says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. It's that word begotten, my only created son, um, my only son. It's beautiful. But God's Son comes into the world that all may have life and light. There are no exceptions to that. All may. We are all chosen. We are all wanted by God. Not, there's not an exception. If you will, those that don't come to the God, that don't accept him, are those that choose not to accept him. If you've studied Romans, you know that Paul talked about the fact that we have an innate knowledge of God. The whole of nature points to God. So we have this innate knowledge. And John is almost saying the same thing here, in that he's saying all have the capacity to know God. But the purpose of God sending Jesus into the world wasn't to make anybody feel bad. To the contrary, it was to bring all people to life in Christ, life in God. So there's nothing about judgment to make us feel bad during our lives here. And the judgment that, that actually happens is, did you accept the light or did you not? Were your deeds done in the shadows of the darkness or were they done in the light of Christ? And it talks about how people that are not Christian that do not follow God, do their deeds in the darkness because they don't want their deeds to be seen by God 
And those that do their works in light, it's because they want to be seen by God and therefore their deeds can be loved by God. And isn't it difficult to think that this is our choice? It's not something that's out of our hands. You know, we talk about having choice as a good thing. I'm not always sure when I read passages like this. I like to think that those people that I love, that are not Christian, will become Christian whatever. And there's lots of people that make up theology that does that. But the simple truth is, it is a stark choice. For those of us that have heard of God and have heard of Jesus, it's a choice to follow him or not. I guess most people watching this video would have made that choice. But I'm going to do something I don't normally do on these videos and say, if you haven't yet made that choice to follow God, if you haven't yet made that choice to believe in Jesus Christ, and it is a choice, no one makes you do it. Now is your opportunity. You can get contact details from me off the Pants Hanger Church website. It's put into the internet, Pants Hanger Church, one in Garden City, and you will find us. Send us an email, give us a phone call, we, we will come back to you and we would love to talk to you about what it is to believe in Jesus Christ and how it helps us in our everyday life. Because it's all very well and good talking about what heaven gives us when we die, the everlasting life bit. But what does it give us during the daytime? What does it give us during those long night hours? Well, I want to tell you now, it gives me a certainty that I am loved by God and that I am loved and wanted. It also gives me the joy and knowledge of knowing that whatever else happens in this life, I will be close to God because I choose to be and God will never absent himself from us. But that also in heaven or Whatever you want to call the afterlife, I will be with God and God will be with me. It's a wonderful, wonderful promise. And I want us to pray. And at the end of it, I'm going to pray the prayer that we pray with people who want to become Christians. Lord God, I thank you that you love me so much that you love the world, you loved humanity so much that you sent Jesus. So that any of us who believe that he is your son and that he came to bring us close to you may have an eternal life, but also a life on earth wherein we are blessed by the knowledge that you love us and that we are never alone. Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you for your love. And Lord, now I want to pray what my father used to call the sinner's prayer, but the prayer that brings us to you. And that even if we already believe in you, does us no harm to repeat from time to time. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I want to love you with all my heart. Please come into me today so that I may love you and know your love and be loved by you forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If this is the first time you've prayed that prayer, do contact us and talk to us because we'd love to have a conversation with you. Go your way and have a great week. And God bless you.